Hello, my name is Miranda H.P. And I'm Connor Calloway. And we are the Bountiful Bards. Please join us in our first ever recorded D&D campaign, The Fountains of Cathedra. It takes another week or so, give or take a few days, to get from where the attack happened all the way down to where Etchings is. You definitely get into their territory about three days outside the city. Is there anything else you wanted to do before you got to Etchings? Uh, yeah, I want to um, talk to Jimothy about his his new magical tingly fire setting abilities. His new tricks? Well, yeah. See what he feels about them. Okay. When are you going to talk to him? You got plenty of time. I mean, probably, probably after Go ahead. Probably around lunchtime because you know everybody gets a little like time for a nap, not really paying attention. Sluggish. So. Yeah. Okay. As he gets done with his travel gruel, you know, probably just grits <laughs> and oats and stuff like that. I, you pull him aside, see so y'all can sit together, and he's like, uh, "What's up?" So tell me about your zap zap. He looks around. And he goes, "Oh, uh, so when he pull, opens up his uh, like his coat and pulls out, he's, he y'all had to put on your coat, light jackets. It's been getting a little cooler, and pulls out this uh, black booklet about Yatal. About you know, it's like a, more like a journal." He said, "Um." I've I've had this for a few years. I found it in mom's collections, you know, with all the books and stuff. Whenever she was trying to make me read, and I had a, I had a bunch of I had a bunch of blank pages in it, so I used it as a my diary. But uh, it had some scribbles in it to begin with, which I I've come to find out. I'm gonna sound I guess I'm gonna start sounding smart. It's it was math I thought, and then also some science as well, and I. I, I don't know. I this taken after what seeing what you did with the firebolt and then what I what it just I can't really explain it. It just all started to really just kind of make sense to me. Fascinating. So I just tapping into what we can tap into and I just kind of willed the fire to happen, you know, and just I got there through the understanding of friction and it, it's not the only thing I figured out. Careful, Jimothy. You're going to sound like you're actually paying attention to books. Oh, no. Don't. Mom would be so proud. Uh, I think she might get you tested to see if you're actually her son. First. Oh, oh that, that's awful. I can run faster if I need to. I can protect myself if I need to a little extra. And if I ever fall off a cliff, I probably will be okay. Good to know. Because I will kick you off a cliff if you make me fight a bunch of bugs again. Yeah, that was all inside this little... But I'm sorry about that. But I figured it was something we needed to do. Bugs, Jimothy. Bugs. I really liked those pants. Kaslin comes up. Are we there yet? You asked us that ten minutes ago. When are we going to get there? Why are you asking me? I'm not driving this damn thing. No. Well, Steven said about another day or two. So why would you ask me if we're I there yet no, now? I don't know. You seem like the type of person that just gets things done. I do. Very much so. So why aren't we there yet? Because I cannot transcend space and time yet. That's scary. All right, and we'll go back for seconds. He goes back to the campfire. So, are you ready for etchings? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to do the whole... Connor sits here and does a whole bunch of describing and... Come along with me on the journey and all that other good stuff. You ready? All right. Let me put the Assassin's Creed Venice music in my head. Hmm. Might have a Venice feel to it. There's no water, though. Well, it doesn't matter. I just like the... No, the ambience of the I like the song. Ambience. The music of the game is beautiful. Etchings. It sounds like people scribbling all the time. Uh, gosh, isn't that crazy? <laughs> the forest of Miro's territory began to diminish and be and become replaced with rolling fields of wild grass, not reeds. Rays of gold cult the wild greens, making this moment everlasting when you later think back on it. Etchings is a remarkable city. High-built structures made from golden brownstone, terraced three to five levels high, and kept flat with observing decks for citizens to gaze across the land from. You can tell from this distance the city was once walled, just as Miro was, but society has grown past such defenses. 
What you will come to see as you walk within the walls is that every street is exactly balanced and appropriately placed. You can stand at the north gate and see clear across the city to the south, but only within the walls. Outside, in the newer districts, nature was able to take its course. Smaller homes of the same colored stone lined carving streets of cobble. A foreigner would need a map to prevent getting lost among the tangled homes and streets as they curve about one another. The only ounce of order outside the walls is the main road leading to the four gates. But despite the magnificence of the city, an eye can just as easily be pulled to the east, a few miles to the east, or from your perspective to the left of the city. Stands a wondrous sight. Eight towers of various size interconnected by a weave of stone bridges, all a pale blue and all capped with an amber glass dome. Tall, window, tall windows spiral up each tower until reaching the dome at the top. At their feet is a scattering of smaller buildings all nestled within a four to five foot wall. Before you, Leah, is where your mother went to school, the Solarium Prime, the first university since the Shrieking, your possibly soon-to-be new home. Welcome to Etchings. Oh, it's pretty. Is it pretty? Oh, it's pretty. So yeah, definitely the city just inside of us. It's very balanced. Somebody designed the city to be very symmetrical. I appreciate that immensely. So going inside, you can definitely find out wherever you need to be. So the wagon starts heading towards Etchings proper, which that could be where you want to start. And then you can head to the school from there if you'd like. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It is the it's morning. It's shiny. I have to see it. Did I say it was the morning? The golden light can be the morning. Yes. It is the morning. The current date you have reached Etchings on the first third of Prepartant. P-R-E-P-A-R-D-A-N-T. Prepartant. Say that again. The first third of Prepartant. So the P. P-R-E-P-A-R. D-A-N-T, Prepartant, which you know is the first month of yielding. Okay, yeah, I had to get the first third down first. Then you started spelling before I finished with the oh, first I part. Oh, I hate, and I hate when people do that. I thought I was going slow enough. Like, how fast do you think I write? It's crazy, and you, you ask people, and they're like, okay, how do you spell your name? And for me, it's like Connor, K-A-H-N-E-R. But then you have other people that are like, Connor, K A H N E R, and then they just keep on talking like I'm supposed to keep up, and I'm like, that, 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 I am not, I am not a quick person. <laughs> it is more because handwriting takes me much longer than typing, and because it's a word that doesn't exist, my brain doesn't log it as ah, it is this thing. So it just hears a nonsensical series of syllables from you until I get to that point where I can write down the right. letters that become a word. Well, maybe while you're at school as a side project, project you can go into a study on why all the months are named what they are and the seasons too. Oh, boy. Okay. I just need to start making videos about that. It could be a little bit. You start making your way your through the twisting roads and then onto the main city where you're going through the gate, which are cornered at the top. It's not an arch, I, more of a pentagon shape where it goes up, the corners are notched, and then it's a straight line as you go through into the city. One might almost say we are making our way downtown. Mm-hmm. The wagons make their way into the district known as the Cadia District, which is the southwest of the city. This is where all the markets and manufacturers of the cities are going on. It's probably the busiest and loudest part of the city. Being a city of science and practicality, it is not uncommon to find plumes of steam rising from this district. And the occasional explosion. <laughs> right. Um, Stephen, bid you farewell. That was nice having you along. The music was great. I really appreciate what you did. And he's already been paying you. He's already paid you for your troubles, which mm -hmm. we, we can go over that later. He says, I, y'all going to the school, right? Yep. All right. If you take the main road down, you go to the center of town towards all the, the fancy rich people's place and then head east. It'll take you right, right to the prime. Perfect. All right, y'all take care. All right, you too. As you begin to move along the streets, Kaslin stops you. Uh, guys, it's probably time. Are you hungry again already? Uh, no, 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 no. 
I'm. I think this is where our journey is going to split. I understand. I'm. I'm. I need to head to E's Way, which is the next city south. I'm going to just find, hopefully, somebody that can take us down there, or take me down there, or whatever. But I. This isn't a city for me at the moment. I can hang out a few more days, but I probably need to get south before the snow hits. I understand. And the roads stop. Well, I hope you uh, find your way back to us at some point, if not just to say hello and tell us uh, how your jewel crafting's been going. Are you going to be here for a while? It's the plan. Okay. Well, I, I haven't had very many friends growing up, so is it okay if I remember you as friends? Of course, we consider you a friend, right, Jimothy? Uh, Kaslin. Y'all cuddle we cuddle. too much. <laughs> We're friends. Kaslin goes, I, I, I don't want to talk about that, but okay. Well, yeah, I'm going to try and make make my living as an actual jewel crafter. I, I actually know how to craft with jewels, I but my jewel crafting is how I got there. That's fair. It's hard to find somebody who will teach you, and I have enough to get apprenticeship. Good. So, I'm glad to hear it. Y'all come find me if you're in Ease Way. Of course. If I come up here, I'll find you, okay? All right. Uh, take care, y'all. You too. And it's a sad moment. Uh, Jimothy tries to hide a little bit of a tear that he has. I give him a harmonica. He, who? Caslin? <laughs> oh, he takes it. <laughs> hmm. You'll figure it out. I guess I will. He tucks it away. All right. I'll see you on the road. I'll bring bread and cheese. Perfect. He bids you both farewell with a little bow. And in just a soft, sombering moment, both depart. As he heads back as he heads back to the market to find possible a way further south. What would you like to do now? Well, I'm assuming that we're seeking the audience with Thiel. So we have a letter from Mommy and her line of credit. Mm -hmm. So I am assuming that at some point we had like some connection we were supposed to make here once we got here. Like we have touched base here and now we are going over there. Or well, do we just go straight to the school? Your like, mom, she did tell you that you would find them at the prime. So okay. if you want to just go straight there, you could. That's fine. I think that we probably want to go to closer into town. Not like to the super rich people part yet, but mm -hmm. like middle income and go to like a tavern just to clean up a bit okay. because, you know, road dust and things like that. Leah's got her good shoes, but she's been saving. Okay. Just get everything cleaned up, washed yeah. up. Yeah. Cleaned up, have a cup of coffee. Don't really need to get some breakfast. Don't really need to buy a room, but just, you know, the right, basic just amenities. Right. Yeah. No yeah. problem. Uh, I'll, I'm sure they're super used to that in this area. I'll note that down and we can take it away from uh, your builds later. Yeah. Like. Again, like because this is a traveler centric sort of place, I'm pretty sure that's really common. More than fine. No need to really role play through any of that. So you both get cleaned up, washed up. If you want to walk the miles to the prime, you can definitely see it in the distance. It's about a three mile walk. No. If you want to do that, or you can probably hire somebody that will take you out there with a horse and buggy too. Yeah, I imagine that's what we do because we've been, you know, you don't want to get dirty after you just cleaned up. Right. So yeah. Definitely, you can definitely do that. Does Jimothy want to go to a shop first and get a new shield? Ooh. He probably can't afford a new shield just yet. Mm, okay, well, that, that might be one of the questions he asks at the Solarium. Sure, and he'll probably say somewhere along the lines of, I hope we don't have to fight anything while we're around here. I feel like it's too organized to fight. He says, this shield will be fine, and he lifts it up, and it's got like four or five burn holes in it. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure any fighting would be... Finger snapping? Uh, as long as and he looks through one of the holes, as nobody shoots an arrow at me, I should be fine. Well, they can shoot an arrow at you. They just can't hit those holes. He goes, Leah, this is probably where I'm going to be turning around too. You know that, right? Why? I was supposed to bring you here, but then head back home afterwards. Ah, and yet you have discovered this new world of knowledge. I, uh, Why don't you just see what happens? Because look, a fountain. Very nice. I think that you might find something interesting here, too. We'll see how it goes. You do know that they're not all a bunch of just book nerds that don't I, do anything else, right? I'm not. I don't have anything against those kind of people. You and mom are both that way. Why would I? I love both of you dearly. I have nothing against people who are pursuing knowledge. I just. 
you grow and you grow up and you realize you're just not as smart as your mom or your sibling and it starts to weigh down on you after a while that's I why i focus so hard on learning how to fight yeah but see here the thing is is that you're like dad right and dad's not dumb you're just a different kind of smart and everybody needs those kinds of smarts so well let's just see there might be something for you there you found that book and it's been very useful to you. You might find more. All right, let's go. But you do indeed go past the very beautiful fountain that is in the center of the city. There is, as you get to the center, there is four on, on the, basically on the wedges of each corner of the road that connects. There are four beautiful gardens that are walled. And behind them are, it seems like, large state buildings. You have the church that is here, of course. And also the other state buildings as well. But this is definitely where the four districts meet. And then in the middle, there is a beautiful little plaza of grass lawn with a magnificent fountain in the middle of it. What is the second to lowest denomination of money? Like not a penny, but a nickel? Or a dime. No, you know what? Let's do a quarter. It would be a silver. What's a quarter? <laughs> it would be a silver piece. But the one you're looking for is the alms, which is the copper piece. Right. So I'm going to chuck one in the fountain. All right, as you walk over there and you see it, and it's just this gorgeous stackings of, you know, intricate shapes, as a fountain would be, and it just has three different tiers that the water is pouring off of. Yes, alms is what a copper piece is called. A silver piece is called a note, and a gold piece is called a gilm. Well, I want to chuck a note in there. You have a silver piece? Yeah. Okay. Do you make a wish? Of course. The world changes, breaks, is destroyed. <laughs> no, I kid. God damn it, I didn't mean to cast Wish. Nobody told me I had that. <laughs> Your intent magic, it pulls on you, rips you in sh to, sh to shreds. You live a thousand lives in a second. I'm oh joking. my. Man, those are some seriously heavy shrooms we had. Jimothy says, Hey, I got somebody that can take us. Good. Uh, you both hop into a wagon and horse after you toss the coin in and flicking it up in the air, glints off the sun and lands with a coop coop. Among other coins that are in there. It's just a thing that everybody has to do. Right. It's just human instinct at the basis level. As you make your way towards the Solarium Prime, the towers are far larger than you could imagine or as far away as you were. As they climb higher and higher as you move closer, you go through the walled area. The guards see you in after telling them why you were there. You get let off from the little horse and wagon at that point, and then you continue to make your way through several, like, two- and three-story buildings. I was definitely picturing, like, on the drive over, I'm doing a thing, like, in Disney movies where the you have your head stuck out. You're like, <gasps> yes. <I love> it. <laughs> Phenomenal. As you're making your way through, there's a little town actually built beside these towers. There has to be. Of course. The People have all, to eat. Yes, they house all the faculty and students and stuff like that. They don't students live. Students get bored. They do. There's plenty of places for that as well. There will be a tavern here. It is... A bowling alley. Quite a happening. No bowling alleys. Whatever their version of a bowling alley is, there has to be. It's just they crop up Okay, are you around Are you going to start a team? No. Okay. I'm there's, just saying they appear. Right. Definitely towards the center of this little plaza, there's there's an inn. You hear music playing even. Uh, there's other play. There's just basically a place for students to come and live. Dorms and such. But the towers are beautiful. As all eight of them, I believe I said stand the center one is the tallest and then they all are shorter going around but the interlocking bridges is also what's fascinating as you can see people wearing you know fine clothes are walking in between the bridges going from one tower to the other entry is the center tower once you walk in among and look up into the networking of bridges there is a large door in front of you that heads into the center tower so jimothy's looking up and he whistles I'm not going to whistle, but he whistles and he's like, this is incredible. Who? I didn't know we were capable of building something like this. See, told you it's not all just books. So do we just go inside? We have to find feel. So I am expecting once we go inside, there's probably going to be somebody who has her hair in a very, very tight bun. 
who is going to be extremely polite, but very direct, who's going to tell us in a very no-nonsense voice that how can she help us? And that is not going to be a question, despite the fact it will be given to us as a question. And then we will ask her. So how do we find her? Just keep walking. It will happen. Oh. So do you go inside the doors? Oh, yeah. They're actually already propped open for the day. There are two guards sitting to either side of it. Uh, they they look very comfortable. They don't have weapons on them except maybe a, like a dagger that's on their side. They're definitely there just to help keep the peace in case Batons. something happens. Sure. Yeah, they have a baton on the other side. You know, bully club if need be. Or billy club, excuse me. Jimothy goes, hey, where can we find this individual? And they just kind of squint at him. Up the stairs. As you step inside the main entrance, it is just a marbled floor with three sets of stairs that spiral up and all meet on another platform that continues up to God knows where in the tower because it's covered. You can take one of those three up there and then there's also another door across the way that you can go right back outside to the other to the other side of this courtyard that holds these towers. I'm assuming they have an elevator somewhere as well. No, no elevators. Well, how did the old people get up there? Carefully. So this is not a dis- disability-friendly environment. There might not be that many old people. Who knows? They probably it's died. It's a school. They died of dysentery. Boy. What was the life expectancy in the Middle Ages? Uh, Pretty much on average what it is now. People get that skewed. I'm sure there will be some type, since you've brought it up, of elevator. Well, just like a weighted thing. I'm not taking the elevator. Of course I'm just not. Making an not for the younger people. No, plus going up marble stairs is really dramatic and bougie, and everybody should do it at least once in their life. That's very true. As you make your way up the marble stairs, you can feel it. You know where you are. It feels like home, but you've never been. You're surrounded by other individuals of higher intelligence that are there with you, or higher understanding, or their own opinions, conflicting thoughts. You just smell it in the air like it's electricity. As you begin to make your way up, somebody walks up to you as you're walking past and goes, "Uh, excuse me, can I help you too? Yes, we're looking for an audience with Thiel. This individual is tall with blonde hair, um, cut short, styled back. An older individual about probably, you wouldn't be able to really range the age because they are an elf. They have high pointed ears, a clean shaven face, wearing a very nice set of clothes, holding a, a ledger and looking down and peering down, of, uh, peering, down at you, uh, peering down at you with their framed glasses. I'm sorry, again? But we are looking to speak with Thiel. We have a letter of introduction. Regis Thiel. Prime Regis Thiel. <laughs> Lean over to Jimothy and Elbow. I was half right. <laughs> you need to be completely right whenever you were speaking to one of the professors here. Are well, you how students? Do you, how do you ever learn if you're never wrong? Excuse me. Are you students here? No. We, we have a letter from my mother. Well, you can be reprimanded just for that. So I would step carefully while you were here. For having a letter from my mother? No, when speaking to another Prime Regis. Well, be careful not to have dangling modifiers, then. What is your name? Sorry. (laughs) That's all right. You just walked into the school and bit off off more than you may could have chewed. I'm joking. No, you didn't. Just continue. No, Leah doesn't care. Ah. Leah Wicker. Leah Wicker. And you? (laughs) Jimothy. He kind of feels like, <laughs> I am Prime Regis Lithu. Tread carefully. Learn well. And if you plan to be students here, do not let me catch you in any form of trouble. Is that understood? Sure. A yes would suffice. Does sure not mean yes in your language? Excuse me. And he walks down the stairs past you. Jimothy turns back and goes, what the hell? Why did you piss him off? It's not my fault he's got a stick up his ass. Apparently he's one of the teachers here. So? So, oh God, I'm going home. (laughs) It doesn't mean he's the king of the world. Like, I wasn't ever rude to him. He just decided that our existence was an affront to him. Well, his existence can make our life trouble. I doubt that. He's he's one of the, oh God, don't understand. I, I guess I am dumb. If I can see it and you can't. Eventually, some other people lead you to... The old lady with the hair in a bun? The top of the tower. 
that not yet, but some of the other individuals lead you to the office of the old lady with the hair in the bun. There we go. At the very top of the stairs, you are brought into the library. You see five balconies of shelved books. At the very top, the amber dome that lets in just gorgeous sunlight, perfect for reading. All the books are kept in pristine condition. You see tables on each floor that you can sit at with um, lanterns that are that are pre-lit sitting there if need be into the night. Of course, later on you'll find out one of the rules is do not touch the lanterns when they are lit, just in case. Well, that makes sense. Marble floors, beautiful railings. Lush it, carpeting so you don't make noise. Absolutely gorgeous. But eventually you're walked across this room and into one of these side offices where you're told to wait. So you're sitting there with your back to the door. It opens. And you hear, Oh, you're the little troublemakers. In comes this dwarf woman. She has no beard, although you have seen female dwarfs with beards. There's nothing wrong with that. She keeps it clean shaven. The tight bun is there of auburn hair. She is wearing a pair of half moon spectacles because I have to pull a little bit from McGonagall. I can't help it. Mm. Half moon spectacles. Um, her outfit is very similar to the individual that you saw earlier, the other prime regis that you just so happened to come across. Very stern expression. And even though she is a dwarf, and if you both stood up, she would be you would be taller than her, you will not feel taller than her. She is definitely very stern as she comes walking in around and sits down, pulls out of her chair and sits down. Interlaces both of her fingers together and looks up at you with blue eyes and says, How can I help you? Our mother sent us here. Um, to... Who is your mother? What is my mom's name? I keep forgetting her name. Tamara? Yes. Tamara. Tamara. Okay. Uh, Tamara Wicker. I pull uh, out the letter. Let me see here. You look at it and she looks, sees the wax seal, breaks it. Opens it up, looks very confused as she's reading through it, but then her eyes begin to widen, and then it all it just dawns on her. You're Leah's children. Tomorrow's children. Oh, I'm sorry. You're tomorrow's children. Yes. Oh goodness. Well, welcome, welcome. And she folds up the letter and opens up her drawer and sticks it into it. And she goes, "It says here that you've come to finally attend school here, like you've always should have been." Yes. I'm very excited. This library is amazing. It is. It is. I work very hard on it, and so does everyone else that helps me. Uh, it's very good to have you here. I always told your mother she said that you should have been sent to us to begin with, but naturally she wanted to take care of your education herself for the most part. She is a bit headstrong. You've gotten here just in time. And Jimothy, yes? Jimothy's like, uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, good. That's good. First, so welcome to the Solarium Prime. You want to start, I hope, in the next term? Yes, absolutely. That actually begins at the beginning of next month. Exams are within the next three weeks. Are you prepared for the exams? I hope so. I hope so, too. They are very, very str difficult, I would say. Is there anything I should do in particular to prepare? I mean, Mom has been drilling me for ages. Mom hasn't been drilling me. But I don't plan on taking it. And why don't you plan on taking it? I'm too young. No, the letter here says that you're going to be taking it too. <laughs> Jimothy. Uh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, your mother says that I was, I was supposed to be the one to tell you that you're going to also be attending here. You're not going back home. It specifically says he probably doesn't realize it until you've read this letter. But she wants you to also attend. And he just kind of puts both his hands over his face. And he's like, of course, mom's going to do that. She's so manipulative. I, she learned from the best. Not me, uh, our our mentor, when we were both at school here together, when we were just girls. And I poked him with you, like, hey, hey told you so. <laughs> I'm not ready for this. Don't worry, I'm sure there's a book in there called Exams for Dummies. Uh, not here. You do not get to study here unless you are a student. Makes sense. Do you have accommodations? Have you found a place to stay or anything like that? No, we were... Directed to come here first, so I thought we would do that because I, I feel like the moment we stepped into the city, 
mom would somehow know if we didn't do exactly what she said. Oh, yeah, she has her ways of knowing when probably she shouldn't. All right. Well, do you have a pen and paper? I will give you the instructions. If you want to take the exams, I will send down note that the tomorrow's children are here and they are going to try for their entrance exams. Yes. So the entrance exams. Uh, speaking of which, how is your mother? Before we get started, how is she doing? She's doing really well. She is, of course, lost in her work. How about her, uh, your father? Are they still? Is he still well? Yes, absolutely. Oh, that's so beautiful. You know, I was there the night that they saw each other with your mother and Miro. I knew. I saw it in her eyes. I was like, ah, this one is smitten, and I'll be losing her soon. But we were able to get her uh, transferred over to the Miro Solarium, and then she set up her own organization in Dewdrop, I think it is? That's correct. Oh, I need to stop by there one day and see them. I have not seen your mother in so long. Maybe I'll make a trip in the coming warmer seasons. You'll like it. It's very beautiful, especially that time of year. All the blossoms are out on the apple trees. Ooh, blossoms. Good drink. Excellent. It's what we're known for. Ooh, I like a good drink. She kind of sits back a little bit and just kind of relaxes. She goes, do you need any refreshments or anything, by the way? Some tea would be lovely. I am parched. I, Jimothy, brew the tea. <laughs> Jimothy's like... Uh, yes, ma'am. He immediately stands up and you look over and there's a little tray area where a little kettle is and there could be a little fire that could be stoked and everything. And she says, I prefer mine with no sugars. Now, so the exams. Yes. Will take place at the beginning of next month. Okay. The month of, this is just me talking at the, um, the monk, the monk, <laughs> the month of hunkerin. H-U-N-K-E-R-I-N. That is when the terms will begin. You'll have an exam one week before the beginning of the term. It takes place down in the Manesto district. That's M-A-N-E-S-T-O. When the college was originally found, that is where we began. Was this, but we grew too big for the city and decided to build this beautiful structure outside of it. Yeah, if you're going to do it, might as well go all out. Yeah, but the, the children of the city go to the old college district to go to school there for the primary education which i'm sure you and your brother yes ma'am oh nothing you keep doing what you're doing dear well, i'm sure you and your brother have both been trained they have plenty of books for remedial studies just to go over and plan for the exams and they're going to go over every subject that we teach here all right i picture basically like the gre study guide that i've got down there oh, <laughs> god well because I suspect that both Leah and her brother are far more prepared than they think they are just mm -hmm. because of mommy. Ooh, maybe. And, well, because it's like, you know, when we went to Montessori school and we had to go to regular school after we got done with that, mm -hmm. and we're like, we already know all this stuff. Why Why are you guys doing this? You know, because yeah. like, you don't really have like a gauge for that. Of course. She continues saying, it, it, it is a written exam. It's going to take three days. Oh, boy. And once you're done, you will be graded. And if you are allowed to be admitted, you can go ahead and start attending classes here if you'd like in whichever subject you prefer. I hope you come and see me and work for me in archiving. That would be beautiful. I could <laughs> certainly use the assistant. If not, there's other classes that you could take. And we could go over how the curriculum goes if you pass. Leah and it, suppresses if not, her academic orientation. You could spend another term down in the old college and prepare for the next season to start. Of course. But just to give you a little motivation, your mother passed her exams the first time. I'm not surprised. I shouldn't be surprised either Did when you pass them. them. The two of you pass them. And she cuts her eyes at Jimothy and he says, oh, and you see he kind of all the stacks of dishes just move a little bit. As he, he's a little shook. Yep. You're not affected by it. But no, Leah the presence of, The presence of uh, Regis Steele is definitely doing something to your brother in the form of just terrifying him. It's the whole authority you the authority you respect. So anyways, I there are lodgings. You could also rent a bunks down at the old college if you'd like, or if you need to find an inn. I will check with the coinage, but I believe your mother has left enough here to take care of both of you for several terms. I have to go over it. Yes. We, we definitely want to be efficient with that because who knows, but it's best to be. Frugal. Yes. Frugal's so. always good. Right, Jimothy? <laughs> right, ma'am. <laughs> Where's the tea? <laughs> here's your tea as he puts the tea down in front of her. Oh, very well. You may sit down, Jimothy. Sit. 
And she he goes, okay. Like, picture him with like this little bitty dainty ass teacup. Like, <laughs> can I, can I, can I have one of the cookies? Certainly. Go ahead, the two of you. Um, as you all they sip your tea and have your cookies. Have raisins, or I am burning this place. There are no around. raisin cookies. They're little chocolate cookies. Okay. Is there anything you would like to ask while you're in front of the Prime Regis Theo? Um. Well, I want to ask her because we can't use the libraries here. Mm -hmm. Um. I want to ask her both about, like, what's the best public library that we can access because obviously she wants to troll through that. Okay. Um, and I want to ask her about a local musicians guild. Ooh, the best library other than my own, mind you, is the old college. The old school grounds have plenty of the books that you will need there. I promise you. Uh, no, that's, I see. So you play, I see you have your loot there. I do. I, there's no musicians guilds here. We have musicians that play uh, down in the plaza as well. But no guilds, but I'm certain you can find places to play in the city if you absolutely have to. What is the largest and most well-traveled tavern in the city? Oh, it has been a minute. I, I'm not sure of that. I will definitely see. And she sits back and kind of, you know, strokes her chin a little bit. Uh, has a few whiskers there, but not too bad. It's just, you know, it's perfectly fine. I think it's more just weird that yeah. the dwarf doesn't have a beard, so it's like... <laughs> I believe it's the half-filled pail. Like a bucket? I believe that's where a lot of the travelers go. It's it's a nice establishment. I've been down there for a couple of drinks. If you haven't picked up on it already, Leah is basically going to start one. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, the innkeeper's name is Bargus. Okay. Uh, he is a dwarf like myself. He's a very good man. I've talked with him plenty of times. He looks out for students. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. That is the one that is down in... Uh, which district was the marketing district again? Hold on. Do, do, do. Cadia? Yeah, look at you taking notes. That is down in the Cadia district. Okay. Yeah, good drink, good food. If you want to stay there, you can. It might be a little expensive, but you'll be fine. Well, I was more thinking, you know, I have to keep my musical skills up to scratch. You know, it's one of those itches. You also need to keep your brain up to scratch. Those exams are no joke. Of course. And what better way to train your brain than by music, uh -huh. which is a complex series of interlacing notes and algorithms. I don't know anything about that, dear, but I've heard about it. My old uh, fingers, and she holds up her fingers, they're all, you know, rather large sausage fingers. I uh, never could really master it myself. I'm pretty good at the percussions, though. Boom. Laugh, Jimothy. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> But, and of course, you know, you, you can always study so much that you lose track of what you're doing. And music is a good way to help kind of reset. So. Uh, we all have our hobbies that we do to ease ourselves. I do a fair bit of drinking, actually. Quaffing is important as well. <laughs> so anything else you want to go over? Um, or do you want to just spend the rest of your time just catching up and connecting with? Bill? Yeah, catching up, just kind of like. Letting us, you know, because it's one of those things where it's like, I remember when you were this tall. It's would like, you, I'm not anymore. <laughs> would you like a tour? Yes, I would love a tour. I can't take you through the rest of the towers, but I will show you at least this one. Excellent. As you go, and there are um, spiraled staircases, not the ones like down below where it's just a curve that goes up along, but these are just the tight knit spiral ones that go up to the next floor. There's about 10 in a ray that one person can go up at a time. Wrought iron. As you make your way up, she shows you that the the top four floors just basically have every re resource guide that you need. Uh, some of the stacks aren't touched as much as the others. Toward the higher you go, the more those are kind of, you know, the older books that might not be needed anymore and only need to go up there for research. But they're up there. They're around the sun where it's nice and warm, keeps them dry, keeps them safe. And then down below at the bottom, there are several chambers that are full of books that she says that her and her... Um, Clerics have to, not cleric, clerks have to go through, organize. They have books that come in from outside the country, and they, they have to go over and see where they go and if any information is necessary. She also states, unfortunately, that if it's information that they already have and no changes, they notate it. They notate where it came from, who the author is. Uh, but if it's in too bad of a shape, they'll just have to incinerate it. They don't, they don't keep any, they don't keep stacks of rotting paper. That makes Basically, sense. yes, of course. Fire but they re they rescribe it down to make sure they got all the information from it originally and who originally wrote it. I'm sure there's like those. <laughs> Sorry, it's just the Miranda brain, but I'm sure there's like you know in Windows and like really big 
um, skyscrapers. After 9-11, they put those, like, escape slides. <laughs> I'm sure those are there because otherwise this is a hell of a fire hazard with only stairways that only allow one person up at a time. Yeah, well, you know. We all gonna die. They're very careful. Yeah. So. I'm going to have to invent those damn things here, aren't I? Leah. Yes. Jimothy. Yes. <laughs> the two of you have made it all the way to the most beautiful school in the entire country. You have the studies ahead of you. You have the exams ahead of you. And you will be rolling for the exams, by the way. This will not be narratively done. You will have to make a lot of intelligence-based checks. So be sure you study, study, study. Because next time we come back, it's exam time. It's really going to suck if uh, I fail based on those rolls. Maybe as a bard, you can figure out a way to overcome any hardships. I can't inspire myself. <laughs> Until then. Thank you for listening. Please leave a review anywhere you found us. You can reach out to us on Twitter at Bountiful Bards. We hope to see you again on the civilized road. And bring bread and cheese. <laughs> As the story goes. Until then.